Hi, Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft back with you again. I just like to continue on our passive fishing series that we've been doing here. What we're going to do today is go over a product that's called a speed hook. Uh, from what I understand, this is included in military uh, survival kits. What the product is, is it's very similar to a fishing yo yo in that it actually sets the hook for you. That way, you're not uh, casting a line out, and even if you're not paying attention, uh, you know, the fish could grab your bait, take it away without having the hook actually set. Uh, a device like the yo-yo that I went over before and the speed hook, actually, it when the fish is pulling it away, it actually sets it in for you. And then once you've got the hook set past the barb in the fish's mouth, then it's just waiting for you to come back and get it. The cost is about the same. They're both about $3 a piece. Instead of having a coil spring like the yo-yo has, this is a piece of spring steel. The durability on this one I'm not so sure on. That's the one thing that I noticed as soon as I touched them was I could see this being destroyed in my pack just carrying it around because this is the type of thing that you would pack when you don't plan on needing it. This would be like a longer term uh, survival situation where you're gone past the 72 hour scenario and you're actually looking for food. So this would be great in a vehicle kit or a bigger bug out bag, something like that. But it's a very sturdy unit, very high quality. The swivels, the hooks, everything on it is really good. But just the size of it, the fact that it is so small, I could definitely see it being damaged in transit. One advantage to the size of it, obviously, if it's a similar price to the yo-yo, you could pack a whole lot more of these in the same, uh, same size pack. The trick is going to be to maybe get a piece of PVC to store these in. You know, as many as you could pack in, say, a three-quarter inch piece of PVC or one inch, however many you're looking for. I've also thought about trying to catch them in the contour of a pot. So here's how the unit works. You preload it, so I'm going to bend the spring. And then there's a small catch and a ring. So I get the, the L trigger into that ring and now I can ease my fingers off. And it's in the tensioned or set position. So this is baited just like normal. Uh, so this would almost be like a double header jig like for perch fishing or something. On top of here is a nice swivel. That way if you were casting this out, uh, it's less likely to get caught. But as, I'm going to hold this tension with my hand here, but as the fish pulls, it pulls the trigger out of the ring and then it stretches it open to full tension. You know, so that's giving you about five inches of pull, five inches of set on that hook, which will be plenty to, to get the hook set in the fish's mouth. Uh, everything about this is high quality, high quality hooks. Uh, the swivels are marked made in the USA. You know, this is a, if you're going to invest in something that you may need to sustain your life and it's $3, I mean, why would you even look for a cheaper alternative than this? But one thing I am going to warn you, when you set this, get the trigger in the ring like I showed. You know, you do have to be careful with it at this point. That uh, the hook itself could get embedded in you fairly easily and then the slap of the uh, spring would definitely, you know, if that was to hit you in the face. All right, definitely so one more time here. This is in the set position. I'm gonna keep my hand on tension on the spring so it doesn't uh, swing and get me. Holding the back side of the hook also. So the fish is gonna pull it, set the trigger, and then in it comes. One advantage to this over the yo-yo is that it's completely castable like this. You know, if I was to have this on, you know, a cane pole or even a regular fishing pole, I could cast it out further than I'm gonna be able to do using like a limb set or anything like that. And then it's just another way to ensure that the hook's gonna be set when I need it. Another use 
for the speed hook would be teaching children how to fish. That's uh, something that's overlooked. This is a kind of a gateway to the outdoors is being along the edge of a pond watching kids pull in bluegill and bass. This saves a whole lot of trouble with you setting the hook for them. You know, as the bobber's been held under the water and you tell them pull it, pull it, pull it, and they just start reeling instead of setting the hook. This does that for them, make a streamline the whole catching process. So the setup of these is going to be very similar to the yo-yo. You could set it up on a limb line. You know, if you were on a stream edge where you had overhead branches that you could set this into the water. You're going to need uh, a green branch would definitely help you in this situation because the fish is pulling directly on the line that's attached to the limb. With the yo-yo, it's fixed and the fish has play that's involved that's built into the reel. Another application to this would be if you were to use a jug line or if I was just find uh, an old jug or anything that would float, I could attach this to the jug, throw it out in the water, take it out in a, a boat, whatever I've got available to me. And again, this just ensures that the hook is set when I go back to retrieve the fish. What I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to reuse those tripods like I used for the yo-yos, uh, pretty much in the exact same setup. Straight monofilament line this time, all the way back to the pole. I'm gonna set these up with a float, um, bait them, set them out, and I'll pull them before evening. So I have three of these total. So I'm gonna set two of them on the tripods that I used for my, my yo-yo video. And the third one I'm gonna bait and actually cast out on the Cuban yo-yo. So I'm gonna hand fish with this last one to uh, see the viability of casting it, see how bad it would twist up as I'm casting in and out, uh, to see if I can actually reel the thing in uh, in the open position in a weedier pond like I'm fishing in right now. All right, so I've got my tripod all set up here. I gave it about three pulls a line. I think that's about as far as I'll be able to throw it out. And one thing the directions did say, which is a really good idea, is make sure you bait the hook before you set the spring. Because once this thing is set, and then you were to start uh, you know, tugging on that hook, that's just asking for problems. There's a good shot of the trigger assembly. My hand's holding the spring in place. Here's the tug that hopefully a fish is going to do. Also this, this angle of the L is what actually sets the tension on the spring or on the trigger itself. So very similar to setting pan tension on a trap, you have the ability to uh, make this as sensitive or as heavy as you need it to be. So that depends on envir environment. You know, if you were fishing in a fast moving stream and this thing was setting off constantly, then you would just kind of bend the, uh, the L of the hook up. They did include, it's like a roll pin to slide over the L to give you some leverage to bend it. But you should probably have a, uh, a multi-tool in your 10-piece kit and that's prime for this kind of stuff. All right, so I've relaxed the trigger. I've baited the hook. Uh, I'm reusing a float that this tripod had on it before when it was set with the yo-yo. Okay, it is knotted. I'm going to set the trigger. Now I'm going to cast it out as far as I can. All right, so like I said earlier here, I have zero experience with these. So hopefully 
I didn't see a big splash. Looks like I've got, I might have a fish already. Yeah, I'm gonna confirm that there's a fish uh, fish on there already. So this is a good test of the speed hook. So it definitely looks like we have a winner here with the speed hook already. I mean, you saw it, it barely got wet before I had a fish on. I was slightly concerned with these about uh, drift, uh, just from tension on the line itself, but it's completely irrelevant because wherever the hook's assembly itself drifts to, I've still got that same tension. And then once the hook's set, it's game over. High quality hooks like this, once I get them set into the fish's mouth, unless something crazy happens, um, you know, I'm eating tonight. So this is exactly the same setup I was running with my yo-yos. I have a piece of bank line running all the way up the tripod, tied to the end as a safety device. On that bank line, I have a bowline tied, then my monofilament is tied onto the bowline itself. That way, say I was to hook something huge, and, or this line, is, uh, the pole just breaks, I still have a hold of the fish. Then it would have to drag this whole assembly off into the water. And if that's the case, then I'm, I'm fishing for jaws at that point. So it's a good thing I don't land them. Another key thing to think about this, this is, again, like I said, this is a fishing series here. So I've been doing this. I've got experience now. So I know uh, the time to set, the location, I'm tuning everything in. So now, if I'm using yo-yos or if I'm using speed hooks or whatever the next video I have planned, um, I have a higher likelihood of success because I've been out here practicing. Let's, let's land this fish and see how the speed hook did. Alright, how's this for realism right here? If the speed hook was to set off on a five pound bass, that would be cool. But if this little baby guy was able to set it off, that's showing me just exactly how sensitive this is. Alright, we're going to put this little guy back. Obviously, if I was really hungry, this would be a good meal to have. Again, uh, not just uh, for the meat itself, this would be something you'd make into soup or stew, and you could use the guts for bait. So this is a, a highly valuable resource, even though it's a diminutive little bass like that. But that's definitely a, a plus one for the speed hook. That was really cool how well that worked out. Some videos that I do are hard to make, some are hard to watch but this one at least it wasn't hard to make. So final thoughts on the military speed hook. I think it's a great idea. I think everybody needs to have these in their longer term self-reliance kit. This is uh, doesn't take up much space. It's very lightweight. It improves your fishing dramatically as opposed to just throwing a line out there. It lets you be inattentive, doing other things, and not worrying about fishing. So the speed hook is a proven winner. You definitely owe it yourself to get several of these and pack them in your kit. Any fishing kit needs to have these in them. It's that simple. These don't cost much, they don't weigh much, they don't take up much space. They're proven on small fish. You know they're gonna work on big fish. This is Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you next time.